Hello everyone, I'm Jesse Punch and welcome to the Pace Lab. If you can't tell by my throwback outfit and the old bar mark on my shirt, it is Darlington week, which means it's throwback week. And in honor of that, I have Justin and Kaz joining me a little bit later on to compete in the second annual Pace Lap Darlington Games. But first, as always, let's roll the highlights. Both the KNN East and West were competing in a combined event at Gateway on Saturday. Chase Cabry controlled the first 67 laps of the race, starting from the pole. But after the break on lap 66, it was the rookie Sam Mayer who was in the lead for the next 28 laps. Engine problems for the 36 set up a restart. Spencer Davis leads the final three laps to earn the win, his first win this season. The NASCAR Pinty Series also raced at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park on Sunday. Kevin Lacroix steals the lead from Tagliani to earn the win by less than a second. In Sunday's Truck Series race at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, Brett Moffitt controlled the majority of the race, leading a total of 44 laps and winning stage one. Trouble for the 33 brings out the caution on lap 31, giving Ross Chastain the lead on the restart and Chastain goes on to win stage two. Final stage was all Moffitt. He led every single lap in stage three, taking the checkered flag by more than five seconds. Pinty Series regular Alex Tagliani finished second. This makes two wins for Brett Moffitt in the first round of the Truck Series playoffs. AJ Allmendinger was on the pole for Sunday's Xfinity Series race at Road America. He held the lead through the end of the first stage, while the seven of Justin Allgaier spins out in turn one. Chase Briscoe gains control with two to go in stage two, earning the second stage point. Stage three was a battle between Almondinger, Austin Sendrick, and Christopher Bell, but a caution on lap 42 set up a restart with only two laps remaining. Bell in the lead, Almondinger beside him, and Sendrick in 20th after heading to the pits. On the final lap of the race, Matt Benedetto makes contact with Noah Gregson and spins in the final corner, taking out AJ Almondinger, while Sendrick jumps to the second place spot after passing 15 cars on the previous lap. Christopher Bell takes the checkered flag almost two seconds ahead of Austin Sendrick. Welcome back to the Pace Lab. Joining me this week, my very special guests, Xfinity Series driver of the number 21 for RCR, Kaz Grala, and Xfinity Series driver of the number 11 Chevrolet for College Racing, Justin Haley. Guys, welcome back. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> Kaz, I've seen you uh, pretty recently, but Justin, it's been a while. What have you been up to? Uh, I think I won a cup race um, <laughs> somewhere in between there. and. I've been uh, been hanging out, hanging out, driving uh, Xfinity every weekend. That's right. It has been a few weeks since we've seen you. You did get that cup win at Daytona. Big congratulations. We were very, very excited for you. But this week, I want to talk about Road America because you both were in the race competing this past weekend at Road America. Kaz, you finished fifth. Talk to me about hopping back in a race car and getting a top five finish. Yeah, it was a fun weekend. It, uh, it had been a little while since I'd been in a race car in a long time since I'd been on a road course. So to, to go out there and get a top five was pretty special. And um, it was a little bit bittersweet because I think we were actually quicker than that, uh, quicker than a couple of the guys that beat us. Um, we had a hiccup in the middle of the race. We had to start at the back for stage three and drive our way back through. But, but still, uh, to recover to a top five was, was a great showing. So it was my last race of the year scheduled so far with RCR. So hopefully a good run like that will help me be able to sell some sponsorship for a sixth race. Well, I heard you guys were talking earlier about your, your racing this past weekend, and you mentioned how fast your car was. And exactly what you said, you had to start on the back on the restart, and then you were able to make your way up through the field to finish fifth. What was that like, knowing and realizing just how fast of a machine you had? It was fun. I mean, any time that you can pass people, it's always a blast. So, I mean, you hate going to the back because you know you're going to have to dig out of a hole, but it is satisfying to be able to pass that many cars. So, uh, all around, I think all the RCR cars were fast this weekend. They've got a great road course program so um, you guys will be doing the roval I'm not planning on doing the roval but um, I'll be interested to see how that goes too because the, the cars are quick so um, it was fun to get to drive it 
Well, Justin, let's talk about your weekend. You guys finished sixth, one spot behind Kaz, and I know we always love to make a little friendly rivalry here, but I won't do that to you guys this week since we're going to play some games later. But talk to me about your run. Talk to me about your day. Yeah, we uh, we had a pretty conservative run um, all, all day. It was definitely high and low. Um, we were running up front in stage two, finished second in the second stage, and then there was a restart with only a few laps to go. And uh, actually, A.J. Allmendinger, my teammate, uh, restarted second, stacked up the whole row, and uh, put put me back quite a few positions and kind of had to race my way back up. But me and Kaz had a great battle for fifth on the last lap. Justin was actually ahead of me on the last lap. I will note I was, that. Yeah. He well, missed turn one a little a bit, so I just barely was able to get him, but it was it was fun racing each other. Well, that's actually what I was going to ask, was how aware are you, especially on that last lap and on a road course? Can you tell I'm battling right now with Kaz, my best friend, and he's just past me, or was it kind of an after-the-fact thing? I well, mean, when it's the last lap, you're racing everybody as hard as you possibly can, so you don't really worry about who they are per se, um, but I'd say we probably race each other harder than anybody else just because you want to be ahead of the other one. I mean, I, I don't know. I was his <laughs> ride home uh, after Road America, yeah. so yeah. I don't know how hard he could have raced me because, I mean, he could have been stuck at the airport. So Yeah, I forgot um, to leave a car at the airport, thankfully, so thank God I didn't wreck Thankfully, him. we raced hard all day and never touched each other, um, but I knew in the back of my head I was his ride home, so <laughs> he wasn't going to hurt my feelings too bad. You knew that would be a very awkward conversation, at least, if, yeah. if he did. Yeah. Well, seems like it was a great weekend all around for both of you guys. And Kaz did take the cake, if you will, on that one. But we're going to play some Pace Lab games a little bit later on because it's Darlington week. So we're going to see a lot of, of throwback, a lot of fun um, paint schemes at the track. But this, this race is a big deal for the NASCAR community and for drivers as well because Darlington is a very special track in our history. What would that mean for you guys to get a win at a place like Darlington? You're talking to the wrong people. Neither of us have ever raced at Darlington so <laughs> but what would that mean though to get a win at a track like Darlington well I, I mean I, I just want to win anywhere um <laughs> but Darlington uh sounds cool sounds cool uh in, in a throwback car for sure um this will be my first trip to Darlington like Cass said neither of us have raced there um and, and it's definitely probably if not the trickiest track on the schedule pretty close to it um and I've never even raced there you know the the surface is like seashells, um, it's down there in South Carolina and, and definitely very abrasive and high bank, you run close to the wall. So um, I think it's gonna be a tough weekend for me, not ever racing there and I think experience might help me a little bit, um, which I don't have. So hopefully it all goes smooth and uh, I, I don't get a Darlington strike too early in the weekend. Well, we'll talk all about that a little bit later on because I want you to explain what exactly the Darlington Stripe is because we're going to be hearing that a lot this weekend, but hopefully not with you, like you said, and some of the technicalities of the track because even the shape is a little bit different than what you might expect. So a little bit later on, I'm going to ask you just how you prepare to take on a new track like Darlington. But first, we have to create some competition because it is throwback week, so why not have the second annual Pace Lap Games? I brought you guys both back, ready for a rematch. Are you ready to do this thing? Let's do it. Yeah, I'm ready. All right, let's do this thing. Welcome back to the Pace Lap, and boys, welcome back to the Pace Lap Games, second annual. Thank you for participating again. We first are gonna start, first of three games, that is. We're gonna start with a speed round of the original Super Mario Bros. Have either of you played the original Super Mario Bros? No. I have not, but I am excited and um, gracious that I got an invite back for the second year in a row. We really had to think about it, like really, really hard, but we're happy to have you back. Yeah, yeah. Glad I didn't blow it last year. So. <laughs> well, we'll have to see how this year goes. Um, how familiar are you with this original Nintendo system? Not at all. Yeah, very unfamiliar. Um, looks like a rectangle to me with some circles and a... Is that even electronic? I guess we'll find out. All right, who wants to go first? Oh, I'll do this. You wanna go first? All, All right, right, Kaz. First up in speed round of Super Mario Starting. Bros. Is this one jump? Round one of three, yep. Oh God. Oh God. What are these you're green? Good. What are these green? Oh! You died. You died. Did I really died. already die? Yeah. It's your second chance. If you don't score, then. Oh, I got him. Yeah. What are the green tubes though? Are they like sewage? How do I get? <laughs> no! Oh, you died again. 
Okay. <laughs> Definitely would never play this. Oh! Oh, that was awesome. Oh god, I'm cruising. I'm not lifting <laughs> off the throttle here. I'm running wide open. Oh! Oh, that was close. Was what that, that a that duck? <laughs> I thought it was a turtle, maybe. Oh! Oh, oh. no! Alright, Justin, let's see what you could do. Here we go. I literally just have to... Whoa! Is what is that? Okay. Are you in a cave? <laughs> what is going on? I don't know. We're Here. back. Okay. Oof. Juke him okay, out. Okay, run away from the little turtle or whatever it is. Uh, I, I, it looks like a turtle with a beard, maybe? Mm. With feet, though. Jump Wait. higher, little buddy. Jump higher. <laughs> How do you do it? <laughs> he thought I was bad. You're even worse. <laughs> To the last minute and jump, okay. Ooh, ooh. New high oh! oh! Affleck. Whoa! Oh! oh, that was a double kill. Do you get point? Oh, oh, oh. Well, am I halfway through yet? You're further than I made it, but, but barely. Oh. oh. Hang on. <laughs> you gotta dig your way out of a hole. Stage three here. Okay. Screeching halt. Whoa, that was like a super jump. You see how high it went? Skill. Oh, I made it! Oh, <laughs> you gotta jump over it. Round two is a very popular board game from the 90s called Guess Who? Has your driver been a cup driver? Yes. Okay, this is like way more complicated than I thought. Does your driver have facial hair? Yes. Mm. Do you think Ooh, that was touch? a good one. Woo! You okay? Heart's racing. Does your driver currently drive yeah. in the Cup Series? Yes. Okay. Daniel Hemrick. It is Daniel Hemrick. Kaz took round one. Justin, you're gonna need to do a little better than that. Does your driver have facial hair? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is it against the rules to just answer the question wrong on purpose? It's. 100% against the rules. I thought I had something figured out. Us. We're in good shape here. Okay, no. let me see who you each have. <laughs> you had Johnny Sauter and you had Ben Rhodes. And we left with Michael Waltrip and Noah Gregson. So, what? I don't know how we got here. Where did I go wrong with Johnny has facial hair? He's got, he's got facial he hair. He does not have facial yes, hair. Yes, he does. It's let me see it. No, wait. Okay. Round, round you three. know what? Round three. Is this not facial hair? <laughs> okay, uh, does your driver have facial hair? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Is your driver at, around, or below the age of 30? Above. You know, this wasn't as good as I was hoping for. So here's where I'm at, Jesse. Okay, I'm just gonna say what I got. I got Johnny Sauter left. Yes. Got Clint Boyer left. Okay. Okay. I gotta go with Clint Boyer. But it might be Johnny. It could be. It's probably me. I mean, look how many I got up. Give me, give me a round here. Let, let me get you. Let me get a question at you. I'm gonna Before go. Before you, I'm gonna go, Clint. All right, now that we've made it to round three of three of the Pace Lap games, I don't really know who's winning at this point because guess who was a bit of a failure? I'd say we're tied. This will be a good tiebreaker yeah. round. Let's call it a tie. I Go. love that. All right, round three has been to decide at all. So we're doing a little bit of 90s trivia. What year were you guys born? Three days from the end of 98. And just to be fair, when we do this 1990s trivia, I was born in 99, um, so I really wasn't around for the uh, yeah. for the nineties, you know, um, and and when I was around that, that short period of a few months, I, I you know I was a baby, so <laughs> I I didn't know anything. Well, all of this trivia is from nineteen ninety to nineteen ninety four, so this will be interesting. Okay, question number one: what? Name this popular piece of nineties technology. I'm gonna go with I think a floppy disk. That is correct. Okay. That is that was, a that floppy disk. Big tech guy. This movie, starring Tom Hanks, was the highest grossing film in the U.S. in 1994. Um, I think it's something like Forrest Gump, maybe? It is Forrest Gump. Question number three. 
Name this popular piece of 90s technology. I, well, I, I have an answer I'm gonna say, but the, the longer I look at the picture, the wronger it feels. <laughs> I was gonna say VCR? That's correct. Really? That is a VCR. Extra point, do you know what you put in the VCR? Uh, yeah, the, um, they're black rectangles that are about yay thick. They're small, are they cassettes? It's actually a VHS. The VHS goes okay. into the well. VCR. That's okay, you got VCR right. I knew that. Where was Will Smith born and raised in this hit 90s TV show? Yeah. So, so glad you got this question. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with oh, San Francisco. Um, no, it's not San Francisco. Really? It is West Philadelphia. Oh. In the 1990 racing movie Days of Thunder, crew chief Harry told his driver Cole Trickle to go out and hit what? The Come pace on, car. the pace car. We all know that. The sitcom Friends premiered in 1994. Complete the line to the famous theme song. I'll be there for... I mean, I feel like you is the obvious answer, but is it that obvious? The answer is you. Oh, sweet. That is correct. I don't know the song, but it just seemed like a lot of Oh, yeah, answer. I was going to say you, too. I mean, I'll be, I'll be there for you. I'll be there for okay. you. Okay. What third-generation driver drove this number 42 Mellow Yellow Pontiac from 1991 through 1994? I'll tell you this. Kyle Larson drove that at a throwback race two years ago. So, point me. <laughs> <laughs> the only name that even comes to mind is Kyle Petty, but I don't think that's right. That is correct. No way. Kyle Petty. That's awesome. Well, so Kaz won. I'm pretty sure Kaz won that, but I am pretty sure neither of you knew any of that. So. It was definitely luck on both our ends that we one, got anything right. It was very much luck yeah. on both of your ends. Uh, after the break, I will award the winner of the second annual Pace Lap Games. And then we can talk a little bit about Darlington. How does that sound? Sounds good. All right. Welcome back to the Pace Lap. The second annual Pace Lap Games is complete, and it was a little rough, but I do think that we have decided on a winner, and this year's winner is Kaz. I'd say it was a dominating performance there. <laughs> Gotta thank the team, the sponsors. I mean, this was big. Whoa. I present you with your trophy. A that Pace is Lap cool. Light Bright. <laughs> I like that. I don't know what it is, but it looks really cool. Oh my God. You don't know what a light bright is? No. Um, I would say that's gonna go in his trophy room. Or yeah, it's, gonna, it's my second trophy, so. Yeah, his second trophy in his life. There. He did kill it though. I mean, I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> credit where credit is due, and yes, that was obvious. <laughs> All right, let's talk about this weekend at Darlington. Let's talk about the competition that really matters. Okay, Justin, like you mentioned before, you ha don't have experience at Darlington, and it is a bit of a unique track. So how do you prepare to take on not only a new track, but a track like Darlington? Well, Darlington is, is just, I mean, there's a lot of hype up to it with the whole throwback week and everything, so you want to run good. Like I said, this is my first time there. I've never tested there, and it's a difficult track. You run up close to the wall, uh, turns one and two in qualifying, you're almost wide open, and three and four is much narrower. So uh, you got to be really um, thinking about what end of the racetrack you're on, knowing um, what line to take, and, and also it's super abrasive. Um, tire fall off will be up to two, three, even four seconds if it's real late into a run. Um, also, the shape of it, uh, like I said, it's kind of like an egg. Um, not really, but just a similar shape of it is, is similar, and it's 1.33. Three miles, which isn't quite a mile and a half. Um, so it's just all, I mean, it's just probably one of the more difficult racetracks we go to. Pit Road um, is way, way, way down into the infield. It's not like you just come onto the pits and it's on the front stretch. Um, the whole shape and, and how you get onto Pit Road is definitely difficult. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm excited. This is one of the tracks that I think as a driver growing up, you, you want to run at and, and you want to check it off the bucket list. So Actually, the next two weeks, um, Darlington and Indy um, are going to be pretty fun and, and new tracks for me. So, um, looking forward to it. Yeah, two two big tracks and two big potential wins on the schedule for the next two weeks. But I, I want to go back to a couple of those of those 
things that you talked about with Darlington that make it so unique and even kind of funky, if you will, as a racetrack. You mentioned pit road, you mentioned the egg shape, one end of the track being way more narrow than the other. Um, and you mentioned running so close to the wall. We hear the term Darlington stripe all the time during the broadcast. What is the Darlington stripe and why is it such a factor at this racetrack? Well, what happens uh, in a stock car and uh, more so in the Xfinity and, and Cup Series is once you get close enough to the wall, there's an air buffer um, that is created in between the wall and the right side of your car. And you can actually ride that cushion of air um, around the track. And, and it almost um, is like you got rollers on the right side of your car. Um, it it kind of helps you out. So uh, when you drive in too deep and, and disrupt that buffer of air, um, you can get into the wall. And, and when you get into the wall at Darlington, it's called a Darlington Stripe because normally you just kind of take the paint off the side of it. Um, really doesn't hurt your car, hopefully too much, especially with the composite bodies in the Xfinity series. But uh, the Darlington Stripe is, is definitely something I, I'm probably gonna get. Um, and I think it's something everyone gets. So um, I guess I'm looking forward to it. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, one thing I've got going for me is I will not get a Darlington Stripe this weekend, mostly because I'm not racing. Um, but I'll keep the right side of my car clean. We have a lot of races though this weekend, not just the races at Darlington, five races on the schedule. Let's check out the weekend schedule. Starting in Darlington on Saturday with the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Also on Saturday, the Modifieds are at Oswego Speedway and ARCA is taking on DuCoin State Fairgrounds. And finally, the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series is at Darlington for the Bojangles Southern 500. Kaz, hopefully we may or may not see you down there dressed in your 1990s gear because you guys have learned a lot about the 90s today, right? Oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm a seasoned <laughs> veteran at this point, so I'll, I'll definitely be at the track in my gear. As long as you know what Beanie Babies are and you know who Whitney Houston is now, I have, I have done my job. Maybe on my nice scenic drive down there, I'll listen to some Whitney Houston <laughs> to, get, to get in the mood. <laughs> please do, please do. Well, that's all for this week's episode of The Pace Lab, and that's all for this year's Darlington Games. Kaz, you are the winner. Thank you for joining me this week. Justin, you are the loser, but thank you for also joining me this week. I'm Jesse Funch. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at the track. Shockingly. Oh, I love you. <laughs> the answer is Whitney Houston. I've never even heard of her. She's married to Austin Dillon, I think. No. Oh. <laughs>